Number six. We see this like uh, kink, kind of amorphous, uh, lobulated areas in the dermis. Good. Uh, yeah, when we go high power on these, they like surrounded by kind of histiocytes, I think. Yeah. You can say like kind of palisaded histiocytes around those. And those usually like in the high power, it looks like a little bit needle shape and feathery appearance. Very good. So uh, I think that's uh, good for gout. Yeah, very nice. This is gout or a gouty tophus, tophaceous gout, whatever way you like to say it. And gout, you, as you perfectly said, you get these pink aggregates that are nodular. Now that it's finally in focus here. And the, you will often see that these are kind of like the shadow of the crystals, which have dissolved during um, uh, processing and staining. It's always been taught to me, at least, that it's formal and fixation itself that dissolves the gout crystals. And um, uh, But I've also read some uh, literature that suggests that actually it probably has more to do with the H&E staining process itself and maybe also something uh, during the processing of tissue. But in any case, when we get normal tissue that comes in through routine, uh, routine uh, formal fixation and processing and H&E staining, the gout crystals are almost always dissolved. Sometimes you'll get lucky and you'll see an area in the pink that looks like brown and more refractile. If you see that, go and put your polarizer in and you'll see the beautiful polarizing needle-shaped crystals. But even without polarizable crystals, this pattern is so distinct. This has got to be gout. Like nothing else looks like this to me. You get the pink nodules that look kind of like fluffy clouds or cotton candy, but then you can kind of see these these little thin needle shaped clefts in this in this uh, fluffy material, and then around the outside you can see histiocytes and giant cells, often kind of a robust uh, thick layer of them, making a granuloma that surrounds these these aggregates. So that helps you know this is material that's depositing here that the body does not like, and it's trying to wall off with granulomas. So here's the, that's an area, and then here's some lower power. And you can see it at kind of any level of the dermis. You can see it in the deeper soft tissue. You can see it around joints. I have seen it actually destroy the complete, uh, like the, in the, in the digits. I've seen it destroy the phalanx bones. Like I've seen it deposit, uh, so extensively in the middle of bone that on radiology, it looked like osteomyelitis and resulted in a toe amputation. And I think that the amputation probably was appropriate because the bone was completely destroyed by the gout, just like osteomyelitis would have destroyed a bone. It just completely disintegrated the bone. Um, and, um, I've never had gout, but from, uh, comments from many people online, it is exquisitely painful and miserable. So I, I feel for the patients who suffer from this uh, condition. So very nice example of gout. And uh, if you are watching this and you're a dermatologist or a treating physician, it is nice if you suspect gout when you do the biopsy, please uh, cut it open or, or if it's already broken up and smear some on a slide. You can, you can submit the tissue in ethanol instead of formalin. And, and notify the lab that suspected gout so that they can process it differently. That can be helpful. But I find also you can just smear it directly on a slide and air dry it and send that to the lab or just put it under a microscope and polarize it yourself. You don't need to cover slip it or anything. Um, you can cover slip, but even without a cover slip, you just put it under there and polarize it and you'll see the crystals beautifully. So even without um, processing the tissue, uh, that's actually the, really the best way to see gout is just to smear it on a slide dry and polarize it. And if you want, you can put some mounting media and a cover slip and you can still look at it that way. So um, I find that um, really savvy uh, treating physicians will often do that or they'll tell the lab so that our lab can, can do that at the time of receiving it or they'll submit it fresh or on, on saline and say, please smear for gout and then they'll smear it and then go on to process it. So we'll get both this type of specimen as well as the crystals. So um, I've been very pleased with, uh, with my lab uh, here and my submitting physicians in my current practice uh, who are all very savvy about that and I always get these beautiful gout smears along with a specimen like this. And that's just a great way to confirm the diagnosis. So that's gout right there. Good example.